What's up guys, it's your boy Moho, back with a video for you guys, and this is an S&D on Meltdown, uh, you know, a lot of you guys want to see S&D clips, and I'm like, alright, you know what, I gotta go hard on some scrims then, so I can get some S&D clips for you guys, um, to post on YouTube. As you guys can see, we're playing against Two Quick Bloods, example, and Rybat, this wasn't a bad team at all, you know, um, they, they, you know, they're all pretty experienced players, and... We just decided to go ahead and scrim them. I think they're not really a full team yet. I think Bloods is actually playing with foreplay. I'm not sure. I think he was filling in. Or, they're, you know, who knows? He's probably sketching. I don't really know. Um, but I decided to upload it anyway because it was a really good game. Um, as you guys notice on YouTube, on, on YouTube, on Twitter, I said that I was going to be posting uh, a video a day. Um, I really want to I really want to do that. I want to get more involved on YouTube. And one of the reasons as to why I, I, I kind of stopped... I kind of stopped YouTube in general was because I was bored of it, right? It, it was always the same stuff, the same material, the same content going out, how to better yourself, how to do this, how to do that. And I felt like it, it got boring to me, right? And I didn't want to, I, did, I just hated waking up every day and having to make something about competitive gaming. So what, with that being said, I wanted to uh, do more stuff like, like uh, childhood memories or just memories in general. <clears throat> um, and talk about you know my life a little bit more, and because I feel like I, I, I like <laughs> I feel like I didn't live a normal childhood life. Like I I had a I had a, had an adult childhood. Like that's how it was for me. Like I, I felt like when I when I was 13 years old. Don't get hung. Don't get me wrong. I had an amazing childhood. And I would never change it for nothing. But some of the things that had happened during my childhood that is. That, that's why why I say it was like an adult childhood. And I think mainly because uh, my brother was always, you know, two years older than me. And his yeah. friends were always like yeah, right. a year older than him. It's like he never had friends his age. So I was always hanging out with them. And I had one friend in my life. One friend that was actually my age. Uh, and it was kind of weird because he's English. And it's weird because a lot of my friends usually are English. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, as you guys know, APOC was one of them. But before him, my childhood friend was Robin. But you guys don't know too much about Robin. But that's why I want to get into these commentaries. I want to, um, you know, share these experiences with you guys. Because we just, we, we, we had just some not normal experience. Like, we were crazy-ass kids. And we did some crazy things. And, you know, a lot of the kids nowadays don't really do some of the stuff that we did back when we were, we were younger. Like, uh, we went fishing one time, uh, we went to, you know, we were broke, we didn't have no money, money was a big thing, even if we had a quarter back then, it was, it was huge. Oh, look at this play I did, I juked him because I knew he was throwing a stun grenade, he was throwing, he was throwing a stun grenade, that was pretty sick. But anyway, you know, back then having a quarter or four quarters at, at least, or even just five dollars was huge back then, right? Well, my friend, he was having a sleepover with me, and it was like... Uh, back then, sleepovers were fucking huge, so I don't want to hear your guys' bullshit talking about, oh, you guys are gay. Sleepovers was huge, because back then, parents didn't really allow their kids to do, you know, that type of shit. They didn't really allow them to, you know, back then, it was just wake up at 11 o'clock, knock on your friend's door at 12 o'clock, and ask them if they could come out and play. You know, their parents were super strict, so, you know, him coming over, and by the way, our sleepover consisted of us staying up all night playing Mario Kart eating Pop-Tarts because my dad was a truck driver and he used to get like, like a shitload of like Pop-Tarts from this company that was damaged and uh, you know just sneaking outside fucking around and doing shit that you ain't supposed to do if you're a little kid <laughs> so that, that was us but mainly it was all Mario Kart it was all video games Mario Kart uh, GoldenEye you know all, all that good stuff but the thing about it is, we were we was always competitive. Like we, we always we we were either either betting on something, or we had to go do something if we lost. Uh, it was always competitive. That's how I knew that I was gonna be like a, a competitive gamer. Like I, like the competitiveness in me is will always be there. It was there when I was younger. It's gonna be there when I'm like 60. You know what I mean? I, I'm like even if I gotta bet like my dentures when I'm older, you know I'll probably do that. Um, <laughs> nah, but. Either way, that that's what our sleepovers consisted of. You know, it was me and my brother, Robin. We always just chilling, staying up late, um, doing little kid shit. But you know, some of the things that that had happened in our life, like we would get like a dollar, and we would go to the dollar store, dollar store, and we would be excited, right? We would be super excited. We would go out, and we were into fishing then. 
and we would buy like the spinner baits and we got our we got our spinner bait and I felt so bad because the very next day the very next day we went fishing Robin threw his line in and as he was tugging it back in it got stuck and he thought he had had a fish and he was reeling in and he didn't tie it good enough this is the day we learned how to tie our fishing lines the, the proper way <laughs> he didn't tie it good enough and when he had brought it in <laughs> his spinner bait was no longer on there and I'm and you know he, he's like on the verge of tears because okay. you know we, didn't, we didn't really had no money and we was really happy about those spinner baits because we really thought that we was gonna catch some you know some fish and he didn't have it on his and you know that you know fishing ended right there so you know I mean you obviously can't go fishing when when you when your best friend don't have <laughs> the right equipment because he had just lost it in a lake and then you know to, to make to make it even worse you know he, he he I think he got money from his parents and he went back to uh, that same store which was big lots at the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had no money, so we shot the big lots. <laughs> so he, he got the same spinnerbait. He was doing, like, jumping jacks because he was super excited. And uh, to make you know to make it even worse, this time we went to a lake where a little girl that my brother was friends with when she was, like, eight uh, had gotten eaten. Like, this lake is just absolutely filled with alligators. And I am not lying about that. That is true. She, she actually, she was eaten. Um, the lake was, like, right across from our house. It was ridiculous. It was, like, a neighborhood. It was, like, a big thing back then. Um, it's, it's still, it was in the newspapers and everything. They found the gator, they killed it, and they cut it open and, you know, got the rest of the girl out of her and stuff, but, uh, that was depressing. Wow. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this lake was just absolutely huge for us because we were little kids, and, uh, it was murky, it was dark, it was, it was really mysterious, right? You didn't know what the hell was in that lake, but there was one thing for sure, we knew that there was some big fucking fish, and... We knew this because we saw somebody catch a big-ass fish there. And we was like, all right, well, this is us right here. We got this shit. And now keep in mind, the spinnerbait is a little heavy. And, you know, you could cast it really far. So this is his new spinnerbait. The kid throws, he casts, and as he casts, I'm looking at it like, yo, because we had, like, competitions, like, who can cast farther? Uh, well, he cast it, and it went into the bushes, and he lost his spinnerbait again. And it was the most devastating day for him and me because I felt so terrible but I was like you know what I'm not going to be robbed of my fishing experience I'm a fish and try to catch something because I remember last time we just went home and did nothing so to make a long story short uh, we actually decided to go find somebody's boat and so yeah we stole a boat to go get the lure but we were too afraid to go in the water because there was like gigantic alligators in the water so we asked the teenager because every neighborhood has a uh, you know uh, a grown-up teenager that's always a badass and always beating everybody up in the neighborhood. And we asked him to go get it for us. And he actually went out on the boat and got him his lure. And, uh, you know, we, we fished happily that day. And I think we caught, like, three fish, um, which was a big deal because it's freshwater fishing and we're, like, 14 years old. So, yeah, that is the story. If you liked the video, please give it a like. Make sure you subscribe. We'll catch you guys later. Peace. What's going on guys? Thanks for watching the video. As always, please like, favorite, and subscribe. You guys know what to do on the top left and top right. Go check those out. And on the next childhood video, I plan on bringing my best friend Robin on to help share these experiences with me. We'll catch you guys later. Peace.